So how does the internet work? Well, first let's look at the, the physical layout. Uh, let's say uh, this is your computer right here. And your computer, let's say it's a desktop machine, is connected through a wire to a router. Um, that's a little box that's sitting somewhere in your office, maybe in your building. And that router is actually then connected to other routers, probably. And those routers are connected to other routers and so forth for a while until at some point, you know, some of those routers are connected to computers. So here's this one. This guy is connected to two computers right here. And so forth, right? So we have multiple routers connected to each other, and the leaf nodes are the computers. So the computers are not connected to anything else except their routers. Um, so the question is this is your computer. You want to send a message, you want to send some data down to, say, this other computer. How does that happen? Well, what your computer is going to do is, is, is going to take the data you want to send and it's going to break it up into little pieces we call packet. So it's going to make these packets of data and it's going to give those packets to your router. So a packet uh, it actually looks a lot like a letter in that it has a, a to and a from, right? So like that. So it says from Alice to Bob, and then inside the letter you put some of your data. And you take this letter and you give it to your router. Now the router, uh, it's, it's like a person sitting at a crossroads giving directions to people, right? So imagine the letter comes over to this router and it asks the router, hey, you know, I'm a letter for Bob, which way should I go? Should I go this way, north, south? Or east and uh, let's say the router was just born at this moment you know we just installed it so it doesn't know it has no idea where Bob lives so it just say just makes up something it says okay uh, I have no idea which way Bob lives so I'm just gonna take this letter and put it here just pick one but that doesn't look sound very good but what the router also does it it does is it remembers okay so Alice lives this way now the router doesn't know you know this this might have been a computer or this might have been a router right here uh, the router doesn't know exactly where Alice lives but it knows as a person sitting at the crossroad it knows Alice lives west you know somewhere this way that's where Alice lives and it remembers that forever so that now when another packet comes later on say on this branch is from Charlie to Alice. Now the router knows, ah, I remember Alice lives this way, so I'm gonna take that packet and put it that in here. So that's what it does, right? And as it gets more letters, it remembers more and more names and remembers where people live, either north, south, east or west, and it can forward packets appropriately and instead of just randomly. And uh, that's the basics of the border gateway protocol, which is the protocol that all routers implement. It's a little more complicated in the in reality, but that's that's really the heart of it. And uh, yeah, what happens is all the routers in the internet implement that protocol. So here's a little picture of the internet. Notice how you have these little uh, stars topology. So you have you know some routers that have a lot are, have a lot of connections. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, and then the leaf nodes. Here's a zoom in of uh, one router and then some of the leaf nodes, which might be computers. And um, so the cool thing about this simple protocol is if all the routers in the internet implement it, which they do, uh, then uh, you can send any packet to, you know, after a while, you can send any packet from any node to any other node and it is, it will get there. And not only will it get there, it will get there in the shortest possible route. And not only that, but uh, it's also cool that if some of these routers go down, uh, because the routers, the other routers are constantly learning, uh, it doesn't matter. So if one of these routers go down, the other guys, the internet will still work and the packets will get there in some other path. path. So another path will be built. 
Um, the other thing to remember as a user of the internet is that, you know, if you're, say, here, you want to talk to that computer over here, you know, it's going to follow some path, and you, you have no control about which routers it hits in the way. That is completely out of your control. So, you know, some of those routers could be, say, storing all the information you send, uh, could be recording it, could be reading it, and you have no control over it, and so this is why we use encryption. So at least, you know, if they keep, keep the data that you send, it doesn't matter so much because the data is encrypted and they can actually cannot read it. So that's the internet, and uh, this is what we call the internet protocol, right? So this idea that um, you're going to route data based on these names. But there's one problem. Uh, there's many problems. Uh, the first problem is the, the name conflict problem. So what if you know there was an Alice that lives in the east, in the west coast, and another Alice that lives in the east coast? Then you know when they talk to a router, this router gets these packages. It can't tell them apart, right? Because both of these people have the same name. And um, so how does the router know? He, he cannot know. So the way this problem was solved is by simply saying, well, that cannot happen. So everybody in the internet, every computer in the internet must have a number. We call it the IP number or the internet protocol number. And those numbers must be unique. So if you want to be part of the internet, uh, your computer has to have an IP number that has to be different from every single other one in the internet. And the way these get allocated is basically, you know, by, um, first of all, you have to ask if you are an ISP, Internet Service Provider, you have to ask to get a chunk of numbers. Uh, let's say, you know, all the ones that start with 129.252. So you could ask for all of those. Uh, here's a little map of some of the, the top level domains. So you can see, for example, Apple computer here. Apple owns all the IP numbers that start with 17. So 17 point whatever belongs to Apple, MIT has 18, IBM has, uh, I think that's seven. Uh, and uh, so your ISPs might have some other ones. Uh, right now, you know, these are the green areas which were free. Uh, this is some years ago, so now there's not as much green. And uh, this is why we're now moving to IPv6, which has six numbers. This has four numbers, each one between zero and 255. We're now moving to six numbers, each one between 0 and 255. Uh, but that's the thing. Everybody has to have a unique number, and um, they get allocated as such. Another problem is the, uh, the fact that when you're sending a packet from one router to the other, it could get dropped. It could disappear because of noise in the line or faulty routers or whatever. And uh, we want a way to you know, have fix that. So the way we fix the problem of drop packets is as follows. Uh, let's say this is your computer. It's connected to the internet, and you want to send this big file over to this other computer over here. First thing you do is you take that big file, you break it up into little packets. Then you give each one of these a number, right? Say there's five in total. So this is one out of five, two out of five, three out of five, and so forth. Then you start sending. So you send the first packet. Let's say it gets there okay. You take the second packet, you send it. Let's say that one gets lost somewhere in the internet. Of course, you don't know that it got lost because you just give it to your router and that's it. And then maybe your router give it to another router and then the third router lost it. But you have no way of knowing that. So you take your third packet, you send it over, and that one goes through. So this computer gets here, gets number three, and then it realizes wait a minute, I got number one and I got number three, I didn't get number two. So it creates a new packet, a resend, and it says, you know, it says resend two, and it sends that back to you, and you get that package, it says resend packet number two, and you realize, oh, okay, I have to resend packet number two, so you take that, and you send it back to the other guy. Uh, that is what we call the transmission control protocol, or TCP, and uh, so you put TCP and IP together, and you get... TCP IP, uh, and this is technically, this is the technical definition of the internet, uh, which is all the computers that implement the TCP IP protocol, as it is. Um, so, 
that's great. But uh, as programmers and developers, web application developers, we don't want to worry about packets and lost packets because uh, we just want to assume we just want to send data to the other computer and assume that it gets there. So we just want you know plug our data and send it to the other side. So really more like a tube, right? So we want this tube of data to go from one place to another. Uh, it's kind of a magic tube, really, because um, just like the Mario tubes where you go in one side and you come out another side, a whole other place in the world, uh, it's the same idea. So we want to put data on one side and we want it to come out the other end of the world. Uh, so that's what we call the socket abstraction. And that is at the level that we, we developers work um, the first program that implemented this basic socket abstraction was the Telnet protocol. And what Telnet does, it is a program that just lets you just uh, type in commands at any computer in the world uh, that you want, as long as you know you can log in, of course. Uh, basically, the way it works is as follows. Um, the computer that you want to talk to has to run a program uh, called the Telnet daemon. Right? And uh, so this is a program that is always running on this machine. And it's just listening on port 23. So think of the port number as an extension number. So this machine has an IP number that's unique. And then it has port numbers, so like a telephone extension. Uh, port numbers are numbers between 0 and 65,535. And uh, for Telnet is uh, actually number 23. So what you do is this machine runs the Telnet program. The Telnet program sends packets over the internet, you know, does all, the whole TCP IP business, and gets to this other side. The Telnet daemon, which is this other program, grabs that data and then uh, uses it, right? So then pretends that it's at, at that machine. And you can do this. Um, let me show you. So if you have a new terminal, uh, you can run the Telnet program in a Mac or Linux or a Windows machine. They all have Telnet. And uh, here is a, this is a machine called RainmakerUnderground.com. And if I Telnet to that machine at port 23, which is the default anyway, it's going to connect me to it. So it says that uh, there, there's another protocol called DNS that translates this English into the IP number, right? So this is the IP number of that machine. This is its English name. This is an IP number. And I got connected to Rainmaker Underground and tells me this other stuff. And it says press return to continue. And now I'm talking to, I am, these commands that I'm typing now are commands uh, for that machine over there. Um, so I can type them, hit enter, and I get, you know, in this case, I'm going to get the weather forecast for Chicago. Um, so you can try this yourself. Um, and that's how you can establish connections to another computer. Uh, I can quit out of this. I can also, um, the HTTP protocol, which is what the web implements, uh, runs at port 80. So if I tell that if I connect to google.com at port 80, I'm going to get um, their main page and then I can talk HTTP to them. And I'm going to get, you know, HTML stuff back. Uh, so basically, that's how the internet works, and HTTP and the web are just other protocols on top of the basic uh, socket 